give some time for people to filter on in. If anybody wants to watch. <clears throat> Right. All right. So this mod that we're making, let's move my mic here a little bit. This mod that we're making is going to be a part of the new Orza Plenty version. So I basically have the Angel Belt mod, which is a standalone mod, the Orza Plenty, which you know quite a few people have downloaded, um, the Quartz blocks and Rock blocks, which are pretty basic; they haven't changed at all recently, and the Reduced Grind mod. That's somebody else's mod. Mine is the Buggy's Random Changes. This mod gets the World Eater, and we'll I'll show that on camera I was planning on releasing that today um, alongside the new or plenty version so um, everybody will be able to get access to the new vein mine enabled world eater so first things we want to do uh, or plenty I've uh, already bumped up the version number so um, let's do this so you can see 2.1 is the version we're going to change this content type to code because we're going to add we're going to add some code into this and let me increase the font size for everybody okay so that is a big change with the orza plenty mod now we would like uh, let's see. I have too many windows open already. Uh, yes, I already had one of these open. So, okay. <clears throat> now we want to start Visual Studio, and this is just the community version of Visual. This is a free version of Visual Studio. So we're going to start a new project. It's going to be a class library, and it's going to be in vintage, and it's going to be called Rock Sniffer. Rock Sniffer Framework .NET Framework four six two. We want that, and uh, we're going to let it create. So this stream, I wanted just to run through, you know, start to finish the process of making the mod. This is very much akin to what I did for the previous mods. So we're going to first rename class1.cs to rock sniffer mod. Okay, so this is the actual mod that the game loads. Um, and so we let's add, first we need to add references. And I've got a lot of references in here. So you need to find the Vintage Story API DLL. So you can hit Browse, and you just find uh, the Vintage Story API. That one right there um, is usually all you need. That's usually all you need. There are some other libs in here um, that you can use. If you want to do inline IL modding, you can... You just use the zero harmony that comes with it, and there's a whole lot of other ones here um, that can be used as well. Um, but for now, we are going to just use the Vintage Story API. A lot of these other ones are for other games that I have modded. So you can see there's some Dyson Sphere in here, some City State. I tried to mod City State, was not successful. Um, and there's some other. Other mods for vintage or other lives for vintage story in here for dabbling, for dabbling in other things. So we are going to be using vintage story at API 
and we also want to change vintage story reference in here to copy local false and with this is going to be mod system and that is saying hey we need it we need to also include vintage story api comment all right so this is the base mod system file that uh, we need so let's go let me open up i've got one of my other mods loaded here just just to make sure i don't give anybody the wrong um wrong information so we want public override void start there we go so this start this basically any mod any code mod that the game finds it it knows you have to have the start because that's what the mod system defines so you have to have a start um and let's just for uh, for internal use keep keep a handle on that API that core API just in case we want to do anything with it um, and now that we have it we can do register item class okay and we're gonna do rock sniffer item and that is coming so we want to do so right now we only have one file we need another file we need to add class this is going to be rock sniffer uh, item okay part of the same project this is the actual item right so the rock sniffer item is going to be type of rock sniffer item and that's basically all you have to do to register a new item with the game so that just that sends back up the api chain saying hey i've got a new item i want to register called rock sniffer item and we'll get to why that where that name is used um, in a minute um, type of rock sniffer item so it gives you the type of the object and that's what this is the rock sniffer item so this is actually going to inherit from item right so using the common all the common stuff so item block all the all the common things are in api and all the vintage story api i mean that's all um that's all online you can you can look at that um or use dm spy to look at the actual you know survival dll survival mode dll okay so right now the item doesn't do anything we're not doing anything with the item it's just being registered so i would like to actually make the item so what we're going to do is uh one of the things that you can get for the game is the model creator right and this thing is just awesome so we're going to launch that and here's the model creator pretty straightforward it gives you a single block space and you can open and edit the models in here so we're gonna go open and I've already got this thing set up to go to vintage story asset survival shapes so we're gonna go item tool and we want a uh, prospecting pick there's your prospecting pick right there right so what we want to do um, is take this prospecting pick um, I don't know do we want to change it at all I'm not I'm not really hard set on the changing of the things but this is all the different voxels 
that make up this object. This is all defined in the JSON file. Like all of this stuff is defined. Um, and you can set all of the different things, you know, all the different rotations. And I mean, it's, it's a pretty phenomenal little editor. I mean, it's, it's simple, it's basic, but wow. I mean, it's really, really nice. Um, so I want to use the prospecting pick, but maybe, uh, let's see, maybe instead of string up here, because that's what this, this string one, right? String two, string three, string four. Um, instead of using the string texture, let's go look in our textures. Users. Me. Roaming. Vintage story. Assets. Survival. Textures. Uh, let's see block so there's there's just tons and tons of textures that you can like pick from right so here's a leather texture right leather texture so let's see maybe we use leather in the recipe and so we can set we can just drag this in here and say load only load texture applied to selected element boom leather kind of it kind of uh, matches the handle quite a lot. So let's see. How about um, resin might be a good one. Ooh, that one might be a fun one to do. Put resin on there. And then we need to select the next string up. Next string up. Uh, that didn't set. Why did that not set? Resin. Hmm. Oh, that's set. Maybe it's set and I just didn't see the change. And resin. Okay, so that changes that to resin. Uh, but string three is it string three we can go to face oh yeah it's definitely it's definitely the resin texture uh, you can see the resin texture over here so yeah that is good to go uh, yeah everything everything looks okay so a little bit of resin I know it's I, I just wanted to show how easy this was. Um, and, it's, you know, you can add blocks and move them and then translate them. It's just, I, I made a couple molds with this, and it's actually really easy. So we're going to save as. Not, not anywhere in the official files. We're going to go back to C and programming and vintage and ores aplenty assets game shapes item we're going to add tool and this is going to be rock sniffer .json. okay that's that's it for the that's it for the 3d object the shape is done we don't need to don't need to worry about that anymore okay so if we go back to our or is a plenty assets game shapes item tool boom rock sniffer .json. Um, there it is we don't need we don't even need to do any texture work on it one thing we do need to do though um, I keep opening the wrong instance of notepad um, so this is this is what when we saved it this is what we did so what we're going to do is just make sure, double, doubly make sure that the right domain is on all of these, right? And this line right here, metal, this will be important. This is going to be important. Um, so what we're also going to do is uh, zoom on down to the game files. 
and find the actual prospecting pick tool. And we're going to load this. We're going to first copy. And we are going to go item types. New folder tool. And we're going to paste this and rename it to rock sniffer. And so this is now going to be rock sniffer. And this is where that registry right here, this text right here, that's where it comes into play. Register item class. The, you can put anything you want in these quotes as long as you keep it as this class. So this will ensure that when one of these is made, it'll use the right class. If you don't reset this, obviously, um, you know, it's just not going to work. Uh, it's just, it's going to, it's going to be named this right way, but it's not going to in instantiate the right class. And that's, you know, that's bad. Um, slot refill identifier, we're going to also put that as a rock sniffer. That's when, I, I believe, and I'm not 100% sure, but when you're using a tool in your hand and it breaks, it'll automatically swap for another tool of this type um, if you have one in your inventory. I think that's what that is. Um, I could be wrong, but I, I'm pretty sure that's what that is. Um, okay, so tool is a pick. I mean, that's just a basic shape. This now is going to be the rock sniffer, item tool rock sniffer. And we're going to put the domain of game on there just in case. Um, you can put all the stuff that you make in a mod, you can put it in a, in a, in a different um, directory other than game. You can have your own directory. And then everything in your game or everything in your mod has to reference that domain. Um, so I, I, I think it's just easier to keep everything in the, under the same domain. All right. Textures by type. This is also going to be domain of game. So the metal line in here, right? It's, it's filtering on metal and this curly brace means this variant group up here code metal that gives you all the different types so what the game does is it substitutes iron if you make it out of iron okay then the metal tag is iron and it puts game uh, uh, block metal ingot iron in here and it pulls that one if you use you know steel it'll put steel in here and that'll just dynamically change this texture based on the variant that it is. And that's how I do it with the angel belt. I set the texture differently depending on the variant. Um, um, very much textures by type. But uh, yeah, that that is a brilliant way of changing and, and making the ability to have variants and not have to specify each and every single one of them. Um, so most of this is going to be the same. I, I really, I could go through here and change all sorts of things and stuff, but I really don't need to. What I do need to do is make sure that these are set to be the proper item tag. I don't know why all these are specified in here. Usually it's star. Oh, wow. Look at all of those. Um, search. Replace rock, sn or rock sniffer. Find, replace, uh, in selection, replace all. No, I want to uh, replace all. There we go. Yeah, usually there's a star. Star dash gold, right? Star dash copper. But maybe not. Okay, so all of that is set. My item is basically available. So if I want to give myself one of these to test, um, 
it's going to be rock sniffer dash variant. So rock sniffer dash copper, right? And that gives you an idea of what these are like. And the the you can have quite a lot. You can have you know quite a few different um, labels on this, like rock, uh, you know, ore that's in rock is usually it's usually ore dash grade dash or type dash rock type so you can have you can have a lot of different you know things on there and we'll get into how we uh, how we muddle through that in a little bit so rock sniffer the item is now ready to go the shape is now ready to go um, now the recipe that's a different thing um, recipes do I have any recipes in here I actually don't have any recipes in here so we're gonna add folder recipes and just for funsies we're gonna grab a recipe file for maybe my random changes uh, grid and maybe something like this so recipes and then we're going to want grid and then we're going to paste rock sniffer in there so this now the recipe is now going to be um let's see Obviously, this is going to be rock sniffer, metal, clear quantity one, and then we don't need that recipe. Uh, let's see. So we could maybe maybe if anybody is interested, we will look at making a mold for this but for now I would like to open the item type and I want to copy the states I want to copy these different metals because I want to make sure that they're under the allowed variants right so let's go you don't need to be that and you don't need to be that so all on one line and that get that's just individual that's just make sure um, that we keep the right ones and there's there is silver oh gold and silver are in there okay well I guess it is what it is if you want to make a gold one you can go ahead and do that um, Okay, so what do we want the recipe to be? Obviously, we're going to want some resin in here. So let's put in um, yeah, we're going to want a prospecting pick head. So if we go to recipes do, 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 do grid tool I'm is it you know, I'm guessing it's going to be under pickaxe nope really where's the prospecting pick well that's weird you'd think that would be under pro under tool Oh, knife long only pickaxe, saw, scythe, shovel. Yeah. Weird. Is it somewhere else? There it is. For some reason, it's not in there. So, I want the prospecting pick head in my rock sniffer. Uh, yeah, let's just grab that whole line. Right here. Um, name metal and I'm just gonna do allowed variants on that uh, 
Okay, so that'll that'll limit what pickhead you know pick prospecting pickheads that I need. Um, and we're gonna go nothing, nothing, comma. Um, let's see, R S R nothing s nothing so these characters obviously you need to fill in down here i'm guessing the game really complains if you have letters up here but not down here okay so the i is going to be the prospecting pig head the r and this is going to be again game this is going to be resin, and that's not going to be the metal tag. Nope. So the prospecting pick at the top, and then under that, you're going to have resin. Make sure there's a comma at the end of that. And then we need one more, which is the S, which is a stick. So... If you imagine this is the top tier of the grid, that's the prospecting pig head, then a resin, stick, resin, and then a stick in the middle on the bottom row. And there you go. That is the way of things. Okay, so you... And I just want to verify uh, with my random changes grid... I must have put that under here for some reason. So like my diamond pick. Yep, it's just stick. Right? So it's just resin and stick. So resin and stick. Um, okay, and what it gives you is an item of code rock sniffer. Um, of whatever metal that you made it out of. And we pulled those variants directly out of the variant groups here. So there's no miscommunication there. And let's see. I think that... Oh, we need to change width to 3, height to 3. Good, good, good. Oh, whoops. That's the... Uh, That's the game's version of that. I don't want to change that. <laughs> this is mine. Width of three, height of three. I'm sure everybody saw that. Uh, okay, so prospecting pick head. We have some resin. We have some sticks. Nice, unique, nice and unique recipe for that. And this is all set. So basically, all of the game-based files are done. These, these are all that we need going forward. Recipe is good. The, other, the last big item that we need to think about is the name of this. So we're going to do item um, rock sniffer. And uh, dash star doesn't <clears throat> doesn't matter what because remember rock sniffer is just the thing you need the variant group on top of that so this is going to be rock sniffer um, rock sniffer is fine I guess for now. Okay, so back to the code. Now we have the item, we have the item type, and we have all of the files that this needs to actually instantiate an item of this type. So that's good. Now it's time to get into the nitty gritties of this. So we want, uh, and I'm just kind of looking at some of the things
just to make sure that I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna start this right here. I don't want to lead anybody astray. So the first thing we want to override no not that not that at all boy public override void on load dead there you see not not that huge one I want this super simple one um, we are going to Uh, client. Uh, yeah, we need to set up using client and server gives us access to I client, uh, core client. I core server. Not that you, not that every mod needs those, but I kind of like having, I like having the uh, the ability to possibly, you know, keep those. So this dot API equals API. Um, if API dot side equals equals enumapside.server then we want sappy equal to api as i core server api if it's not a server then um cappy equals api as i core client api so all this does is it is it says okay when the game loads set set my you know core api to the right one right and if we're on the server i want to set the server side api if we we're on the client i want to set the client side and this just gives me access to client and server things right away and i don't have to futz around with anything too much this is this is all that we need to do um really for unloaded this will load everything up and we'll be good to go. Um, but in this, if we were to add tool modes to this object, this is this unloaded, this is where you would build those. This is where you would have those. But I'm, I'm less inclined to do tool modes for this because they are a nightmare. SV, the SVG system that, that the game uses, I, I basically had to copy and paste the, the the base game's SVG files because it's just like the the chisel the big the big chunk the biggest uh, option for the chisel which I think is like six uh, was it sixteen by or no eight by eight I think so that that grid that you see and that icon when you hit F and you see those grids that grid that you see that's 2,000 lines of code to build that. 2,000. Now, something tells me that that's not exactly optimum. But, you know, it is what it is, I guess. I don't... Uh, anyway, it's frustrating. All right. So, uh, the next thing we want to do, really the only real one we need to do on this, is override... So that that's going to be our bottom. We don't we don't need to worry about that unloaded anymore. So um, public override bool on block broken with boom on block broken with. This is an event that is called when the player breaks a block naturally in this world by this player using this item slot at this block so this gives you all of the items that you need to get whatever block it was that was broken now 
Um, we don't really need um, the block because one thing I found with this procedure is when it's called, the block is already broken, right? So it's not really possible to get what block it was. This is why block, for some reason, is not in here. There is no reference to what block it was. There's the selection, which gives you the coordinates of said block. But when you get into this procedure, the block is already gone. So any query on that location will yield you error. That's all that that, that spot is now, is error. So, you know, it is what it is. Uh, so what we want to do in here is do our logic, okay? So we want to return true because it's a bool. Uh, returning false basically negates and cancels any functions that you do in here. It just it just voids the functions. You don't you it just that's it. You don't have to do it. Um, all right. So on this route here, we want to grab the rock sniffer is basically you break a block and it will it will basically query all the blocks directly under that all the way to mantle and it's going to report to the player what rock types are under your feet at that exact block location it's not an area based statistics aren't involved i wanted this to be very very simple to dig up blocks so the first check we're going to do, I think, um, let's see. We're going to do private bool is rock equals false. We're going to override. I think it's a void on break. Uh, maybe it's a bool on nope float on block breaking there it is on block breaking if so this this one is called when you smack something with it with a with a tool and it and it causes damage that's what this is what's called on block breaking and this actually allows you to grab what block it is. I had to do this with my World Eater mod um, because obviously on block broken width, the, the block is gone. So the check on the block that you that you break is, is done here. Um, so what we want to do, block, uh, block equals, uh, let's see, player.world no 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 um uh let's see i player player dot uh, let's see how do i want to do this ah i know why uh, block block equals player dot entity not entitlements I, I do that every time entity dot world dot block accessor dot get block at the location there it is p block position so block selection dot position that grabs whatever block whatever block you're trying to break that just grabs whatever block that is now if block dot code uh, uh first first code part okay if block first code part does not equal rock no good wow the um the uh 
IntelliSense is just off today. Okay, so the uh, normal rock in game is rock dash type, right? So if if we're not hitting rock, then I just want to. Uh, well, well, I, I guess we can flip around the logic a little bit. Let's go equals equals. No, equals equals rock. Then is rock equals true. Else is rock equals false. Okay, so if the first code part equals rock, which means we're hitting on rock, then we can set is rock equals true. Otherwise, it's false. So if we're hitting or, if we're hitting dirt, if we're hitting a tree, it's not going to be a rock. So that makes sure that you have to hit a rock. You have to hit some sort of rock in order for this to work. So in here, we are going to say if is rock. And if it is not is rock, um, return base dot on block broken with. Oh, why didn't this fill in world by entity item slot block selection? There we go. <laughs> So if it's not rock, just treat it out. Just treat it how you would if the mod didn't exist. That's what this is. Base on block broken. All this does is pass this along up the up the chain of objects and say, I don't, I'm not going to handle this. You know, the base object can handle this, which is you know item. Item is the base. Um, and however that item manages that, then that's fine. I don't I don't care about it. Um. I'm not going to do anything with it. Just keep it going and return whatever is as a result of that. So that is our that is our first main check whether or not what we're hitting is rock. Now, if it is rock, then we get into so um, we are hitting rock time to um, probe the ground okay so now we are hitting rock not ore not sand not gravel not wood we're hitting rock um, so we need to do some sanity checks before we get into this we need to do some we need to do some check if by entity is entity player so this is just like, hey, is this a player actually breaking the block? Because, you know, maybe it's something else. I don't know. Who knows what could be broken, breaking the block? I don't know if, do, do, can creatures break blocks? I have no idea. Um, so that just says, hey, we are, we're going to be a player. Um, and then we need to do I player, uh, player equals world dot player by user ID um, and then we're going to say by entity as entity player dot player user ID and there's about a thousand ways that you can actually do this just make sure I've got yeah that should be right so what that does is just grabs the player, right? It just says, hey, this, you know, this is the player. Let's just, I, I need to use the player for things, possibly. Um, all right. Now, uh, let's see. Now we need to do some checks. And I'm looking through my other file here. I'm just, this is some of my raw code 
for the world eater and I just I just want to make sure that I'm not missing anything um, so we want to set up a oh, let's see public now let's do private uh, void rock sniff we're gonna um, we're gonna do some rock sniffing over here and we want to pass it uh, we want to pass it I player player I world accessor world um, and let's see block selection and we don't care about quantity multiplier where this is not a mining tool we don't care about that so we're passing it the player the world and the selection that's all we need to care about and we're going to spit out a bool. Now let's spit out a list of type string. Right? So we want list string uh, rock types equals new list string. And do we have, oh, we do, collection generic, nice. Um, okay, so we want to set rock types equal to rock sniff player world block selection. Okay. And we could, I mean, we could just, send it the rock there's again there's about a hundred different ways that you can solve this same problem and you know this is just one of them so it is what it is all right rock sniff this is this is what's actually going to do our work right this this is this is a an important feature um so in here we actually we don't care what face they hit on. We don't. It's going to be straight down, either way. This is not something to sniff, you know, horizontally in any any such capacity. It would be nice. It would certainly make exploration a little easier, but it is what it is. Okay. So in here, we want to make sure if player equals equals null. Return list dot empty list string dot list string uh, return null. Okay. If world equals equals null, return null. If block selection. Okay, the, I usually do that this kind of thing just because, man, sometimes I run into issues where one of these will be null and it'll just it'll just be bizarre. It'll 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 just spit out bad data and it's um, I want to avoid that at all costs. Okay, so list string um, rock types equals new. List string that gives us the the return list so return rock types so now that now it's not complaining anymore that we're not returning something so in here this is where we are going to use some built-in functions and try to figure out 
um, what area to look at. So um, I would like block uh, cur block equals uh, let's do current block. This is going to be that's going to be a block that we use to iterate and check. Okay, now I need to we need to walk blocks. So, we need to use the world dot block accessor dot walk blocks. This is an internal thing to walk over a series of blocks, right? So, it basically takes whatever bounding box you give and it and it just starts sending the blocks to you. Okay, walk blocks. And this is going to be kind of a funky one. So, pay attention. Everybody paying attention? Better be paying attention. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> min position. Block selection dot position dot add copy. And we are going to say um, there are a bunch of overrides for this. What we are mainly working with is DX and DY and DZ sending in an offset for that. Um, so we want the minimum, I think is where it starts. But we want to go from the top down, I believe. So we will see if we're going to do block selection dot position. Well, we can just send it block position dot copy. Okay, so that is the minimum position. We're going to start at the minimum position. And we're going to extend, hopefully, down to the maximum position. So now we need to say block selection dot position dot add copy. And now we're going to offset it down. Okay, which means X, Y, X and Z do not change. It's the Y value that changes. So we are going to say add copy DX, no change zero okay this is offsetting it not hard coding it um, creates a copy of this block position offsets it offsets it so why I want to set y to block selection dot position dot y okay but I want to set it to minus position dot y okay all the way down and then maybe plus one get it up above mantle I think mantle is at zero I'm pretty sure mantle is at zero so I don't care about mantle I don't even know what kind of block mantle is and then the offset of z is also zero okay so now we're walking blocks the next section after we do min position and max position is an action. What do we want to do on that block? Well, we could enter here. We could enter a um, uh, a new uh, what am I thinking? A new procedure to call. But I, I don't need I don't need anything fancy in here. I just need something simple. So I'm going to make a delegate. Um, and then we need to block. D block. Block. Position. Why is that? Block position. OK, 
Okay. What? Am I missing something? Oh, math tools. Yep. Okay. So the delegate, this is just like, hey, this is a little bit of code to run on every single block. Because walk blocks calls, for every block that it walks, it calls that on block that you see there. So that action, block, block, position, on block, that is called every time. And rather than actually call a new function and add more to the stack, the program stack, this is just this is just a repeating section of code. Uh, okay, so hopefully this is going to drill from the top down, not from the bottom up. So inside of this code is where we want cur block equals. Uh, world dot uh, block accessor dot get block and we know there's a new block position actually we have access to the block so I, I don't need I don't need this you can see the delegate gives me gives me actual gives me the block um, if rock types dot contains d block dot get uh well let's do a let's let's do a if d block dot code first code part if d block dot first code part doesn't oh that's the procedure does not equal rock uh, return. Okay. If it's not rock, we don't care about it. So skip it and move on to the next one. So that that bombs us out if it's not rock. If it is rock, I hate that the boy well, IntelliSense is just off its game lately. Um, if rock types which is our list of strings right so if rock type dot contains um, we want the d block dot last code part okay that is a string last code part is already a string so what that does is it just gives us the last part. So the first part is rock dash rock type. So if it contains the rock, and then we just negate it. If it does not contain that rock type, why are my, my curly braces are all out of whack? Oh, this is missing that, that's why. Then rock types dot add and then d block dot last code part. And then this is going to be false. The center order, I, I honestly don't know what that means. There's no if true, the blocks will be ordered by the distance to the center position. Oh, distance to the center. So I don't know if that center position is within the min and max that you sent or the world min and max. So, yeah, false on that. Um, okay, so let's just run through this logic again one more time. Walk blocks is going to take me from the top, which is the position... That I spent that I send in here to the bottom, which is a minus y plus one position. So it should go all the way down. If I'm at 112, right? If I'm at 112, this is going to offset me negative 112 plus one. So negative 111. That's what this should do. Okay. And then on every block that you find run this delegate code. So it's going to come in here and say, hey, does the first code part 
equal rock. Okay. If it doesn't equal rock, then return. I, I don't even want to. I don't even want to look at the list if it's not. If it is rock, does our type already contain that rock? If it does not, which is the not here, then add to the to the list. So if if every block under you, if every rock under you was say bauxite, right? This would go through every single one and only add bauxite once to that list. Well, it should anyway. We'll see if it's in practice. Um, okay, so this will then iterate through all of those blocks. I'm not going to edit them. I'm not going to break them. I'm just I'm just poking them a little bit. I'm just looking at them. Um, okay, you could also instead of doing walk blocks. Um, which has a limit on how often you can how, how often you can run it per client. So I think there's a limit of three times per something like 200 milliseconds or something. And I don't know I don't know how the game determines that. But um, yeah, walk blocks there is a limit. So you could just set up a, a four statement since it's a single block all the way down. It would be very easy to do a for statement on this. That's an alternate way of doing it. You could certainly do that way. So after we're done walking the block straight down, we return that list. We just return it up to here, and this, this list gets set to equal that list. Um, now, if rock types... Um, dot count equals zero uh, we want to oh that means when this thing returned it found no rocks so for now um, if API dot side equals equals dot client cappy dot show chat message um, oddly, um, there are no rocks under you. Okay, the I I've been using chat messages rather than log entries for debugging, just because it's a lot easier while you're in game to see the chat message pop up. Um, so much easier to do that. So yeah, if, if we're on the client side, then I just pop up a chat message saying, hey, for some reason, the rock types is empty. There's no, there's nothing in there, even though we just walked all those blocks, which means there's a problem in our logic down here, which is, which is not good. Okay, so if, we're, if we don't get in there, um, which we want to return uh, true anyway, just to uh, keep sane. So the block breaks anyway. It block breaks, it drops its items, it plays the sound, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, if you don't want any of that to happen, you, you return false. Um, okay, so we have rock types in our list. So for each string type, let's do R type. I'm, I, I always hesitate. To do really generic words for my variables in uh, rock types, so this will enumerate. This will enumerate over all of the strings in that list. And if API dot side equals appnum side dot client, we're only going to do this on the client side. So only the client will see it. Cappy dot show chat message, um, and then I want. I also want to do rock found so this will print out our. Uh, let's do, 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 do,
do yeah let's do our type so what this should print out let's say it finds chalk bauxite and a site as you go down so what this should print out is rock found colon and then under that chalk and then bauxite and then andesite that's what it should print out um can we like capitalize uh no dot huh there is no like we can do a two lower but we can't capitalize which is weird to upper that upper is the whole thing yeah there's no like capitalize huh that's kind of weird anyway it was I, I, it was worth a look see um all right so on block broken with this will run through print out all of that stuff and then once this is done um it should just return true it should just break that block and then dump out all that stuff into your chat window and i do this check here no i didn't want to hit insert there we go um wow i my 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 typing my typing foo is just just not good today um the reason I check this is the server, there's no chat window on the server. I mean, there's no point in, in doing that. Plus, it just ensures only the client that runs this code, that processes this, is actually going to see the rock types. So if you have 10 people on your server and they're all out prospecting for rock, you know, you're not going to get constant messages in your chat window. Um, about what they're finding. Uh, okay, so that basically is it. Um, that should be it anyway. Rock sniff, yep. So the big question is, will this compile? It should compile, but let's rebuild it anyway. Bingo, we built. Okay, so rock sniffer here bin release rock sniffer and just paste it right in there so now the orza plenty mod has the rock sniffer on it and we've already set we've already set that to code right so that's already code good times now for testing so let's zip this up. For one, I'm going to copy the name. And I should just, I should find a way to automate this, but it is what it is, I guess. Um, you see users buggy app data roaming vintage story data mods or is a plenty is good to go. There it is. 2.1. Now I could go into Orza Plenty and, and tweak some more values. You know, I think Galena is rendering or generating a little too much. Um, but I did, I think I did already nerf that by a lot. So I hate when it uses the wrong notepad. Use this one. There you go. There you go. So my Galena in here. Come on. Um, yeah, it's only one try per chunk. I mean, I could set that down to like 0.5, but it is what it is. So we're going to try with the way that we have. Um, and just to be on the safe side, minimize that. Vintage story, cache, unpack, uh, or is it plenty? Just in case, delete the cached version. And now we should be able to start the game. Uh, where is it? There it is. 
and I will windowize that so you guys can see it. So I'm going to open my single player test world and uh, fingers crossed that the the mod actually works. You know, it is what it is. The first test of the ore sniffer, the rock sniffer. And look at that, it only take us it only took us about an hour. And the reason I thought of this mod is early in the game, I had a heck of a time trying to find certain rock types. And there's no indication on the surface of what rock is deeper underground. So like finding kimberlite is now impossible with simple like surface indicators. Um, and so I had a heck of a time finding certain rocks. Yeah, the game takes a little while to load. Um, we're going to do time add 8. All right. Yeah, we got a, we got a lot of stuff here. I've been ten, I got a bunch of bone meal and stuff on me cuz I was there's a bug with the new version of the game. Um Okay. So, first thing is I want to show off I want to show off my sweet sweet world eater. So, this is a very advanced mod. It's got it's got tool modes. So you hit F and you can see you got one by one, three by three, five by five. And then you have a vein mine. So if we go five by five, you can just like mine all the time. And it, it drops so many items. It takes longer to pick up the items. Because they don't cluster like they do in Minecraft. They all are individual. Um, and then the vein mine, boink, you can just go pop. And the vein mine actually puts it into your inventory. It doesn't drop anything on the ground um, because that would cause an enormous amount of lag. Um, so I don't do that. But yeah, that is the glory of the world eater. And so you can set it to like 3x3, three three and you can just dig tunnels. Okay, so let's test out and see Rock Sniffer. Look at that, Rock Sniffer. The Rock Sniffer is in. There's the recipe that we set up, which is excellent. So I want to give item Rock Sniffer uh, steel. Why not? Why not give me the steel one? Because reasons, you know. Um... This is a test world. So there's the rock sniffer, and you can see, you can see the the orangeness of the string. So it's not the actual string texture. So yeah, you can see how orangey the string is. So it shouldn't do anything on grass. Yep, it doesn't do anything on grass. But, boom. Rock found, andesite, bauxite, and chalk. Of course, it's backwards. <laughs> yep. Andesite, halite, and chalk. So halite is under there, which means there's some, uh, there's actually some salt under that spot. Um, and it shouldn't work on ores, but does it work? Uh, let me give. Give block rock chalk. So I know there's an aura right under that. So if we say, hey, andesite, bauxite, chalk. So obviously, those are backwards. We're going to save and leave. And then quit. So... <laughs> Uh, I, it was a it was a it was a coin toss. It was a fifty fifty shot, <laughs> and obviously I picked wrong. So we need to set this to here and set this one to here. Okay, so it looks like max position, and then it goes down to min position. I thought it would would go down to. I thought it would go from min to max, but, you know, maybe it's just the way that it... 
Maybe it's the way that it... We'll see. Well, we're gonna we're gonna test this again. Uh, rebuild. And again, I wish I wish I had this automated this process. So rock sniffer, copy. Do 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 do. Or is it plenty paste? So you can see this one's newer. So I know that's right. I just didn't set up any sort of copying and pasting and moving around of the things. Okay, so there's my orders of plenty. Just to be on the safe side, I'm going to delete it out of the cached. So let's see if it actually gives me in the right order. Because if it doesn't, I'm going to have to tackle it a different way. And I really should set up a, a system to open up a just a test world there's a there's a command there's a command line option that you can do that just very quickly opens a test world but the biggest the biggest draw the biggest thing that is slowing us down is the is the alchemy mod that mod for some reason takes forever to load i think it's all the recipe generation that it does Dun, dun, dun. Come on. You can do it. You can do it. Okay. Okay. So, again, test on dirt. Nothing happens. Okay. Test on this. And a site box I chalk. So, obviously... The, the reason why this is happening is it is it's taking some minimum value and it's using that. So what I can do rather than Okay, rather than do this, what we're going to do, save and leave world. Because I want it to be, the, 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 the first one printed out, I want to be, um, I want to be the, the top level. I want to be the highest, then the middle, and then the bottom. So, how are we going to do that? What we could do is walk these ourselves. So for int uh, int um, I know the the standard for these, uh, but I want to do int height equals block selection dot position dot y height minus 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 height is greater than zero so while for for when we come in here we're going to set height to y okay we want height to be greater than zero. Okay, we don't want to go under the world. That would be bad. So even when it's one, I don't care what the. Even if it skips the very last block down by mantle, I don't care. Like, who cares what that single block is? It might even be ore. I don't know. Or lava, crying out loud. Um, so, and then we subtract height as we go down. So this is maybe the better version. Um, and you know, this, this is just, it's going to have to do a, a get blocks, which is the, the least, yeah, it's, it's the least performance heavy on the, or the least performance on this, but we're only going to be querying at most about a hundred and some blocks. I mean, it's not going to be that bad. Um, so we have to do the same test if 
D block. Oh, we're not going to access that block, are we? So we we actually need that current block. So block, cur block, cur block equals world dot uh, block accessor dot get block on do 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 do. Um, we need to set up block position, um, block pose equals, do, 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 do. Uh, let's do equals new block position, int x, int y, int z. So block selection dot position dot x block selection dot position dot y block selection dot position dot z so that's that gives us the actual position of the block that we passed in x y and z <clears throat> then we need to um, if height is going to start at y, let's let's just say it's one ten. Then it's going to go one o nine, then one o eight, then one o seven. It's going to shrink down. Um, is that the way to do it? I think it might be. Think it might be so um we already checked the rock type in here uh no up up here don't we do it up here on block broken with energy player if yeah if not is rock okay return true I want to know why return base I actually want to break the block right that's why the block wasn't breaking when it was doing the check um, okay so Hmm. I'm trying to think of a math a math solution to this. So we're gonna start at height and go down. And as we go down, we want to you know compare all the block all the rock types. But when we get block, oops, um, when we get block, I need to subtract. So I think a better way of doing this, int offset equals zero. Offset is less than or equal to block selection dot position dot y offset plus plus. Okay, that still limits us. Maybe even set this to one. Is there an option for Visual Studio to trim trailing spaces? Boy, the trailing spaces in some of these lines is just crazy. Um. Okay, so we want cur block equal to world dot get nope block accessor dot get block and this block position block ID X Y and Z so block position dot X 
We'll get to y in a second. Block position dot y or dot z. Now y is going to be block position dot y minus come on dot y minus offset. Okay. ID of the given of the block returns the ID of the given block box position. Okay. For error blocks or invalid coordinates, you go to blocks instance with air code with block code air. So this will never return null. So we don't ever have to worry about it being null. Okay. So if cur block dot first first code part equals equals rock um, if rock types dot contains cur block dot last code part And again, we're going to negate that. Um, rock types dot add cur block dot last code part. Same kind of the same kind of code that we have down here. So if first code part dot rock. So if it is rock. And if it's not contained inside the list, add it to the list. Now, I'm hoping this works. So we don't need this walk blocks anymore. So let's just run through this logic one more time. Um, we grab the block position x y and z so we set the position that we're passing it we're setting an offset of one um and we're not we're limiting it to y whatever level that we are at so 112 115 whatever whatever y level you are set at um, we're limiting it to that level and then we're adding it and then what we're doing is we're getting the block at that offset. So we're taking the y value that we set initially. This is our initial y value. And then we're getting the block minus that offset. So the offset, the first time this enters, is going to be 1. y position minus 1. And then minus 2, minus 3, and so on, and so on. Um, and then... I want to do, let's do less than here, position.y. I want to make sure we're not going to hit that mantle or hit underneath that mantle. That would probably be bad. Um, if the first code part isn't rock, then skip it. Um, what I could add in here is maybe, maybe some liquid. If we wanted to also find lava. <clears throat> Maybe lava in the future um, is going to be important. And lava is kind of hard to find in the world. So let's look at um, in here vintage story, assets, survival, block types, liquid. Okay. So lava, again, it's loading in the wrong instance of notepad wow I, I loaded up a notepad and it's literally the wrong thing so code is lava um, I'm guessing the other one is water bingo um, it's funny that like snow blocks and glacier ice is actually uh, 
a, it's, it's set in here as a liquid. But maybe I want to maybe I want to also say, hey, there's some lava down below you, right? So I can do this. If first code part equals equals rock or cur block dot first code part equals equals lava. Um, so the lava thing will be a pretty extensive, so lava still seven. So if we get the last code part, it'll show seven. <laughs> Not helpful. Um, so if let's do string code part equals um cur block dot first code part equals equals rock question mark cur block dot last code part or cur block dot first code part code part okay let me explain that line this is just an inline if statement that's all that is so what this does is say i want a string called code part okay because if the first code part is rock or the cur block first code part is lava so if the, if the first code part is rock or it's lava but if it is rock i don't want to say rock i want to say what kind of rock it is but if it's lava, I don't want to say the height of that lava, which is basically what this 7 is, right? That's the last code part is 7. That doesn't tell me anything. So I don't want the first, I don't want the last code part. I want the first code part if it's lava. So this is just saying, cur, cur block, for, if the first code block, or if the first code part equals rock, that's what this question mark says. This is an if statement. So this will be true or false. If the first code part is rock, do this or return this to this code string code part. So if it's rock, return the last code part. If it's not rock, return the first code part. Right? So those are my only two options because I do this if up here. And then, then I just do the contains on that code part, and then um, I either add it or I don't, depending on if it's already in there. So now um, I should be able to return that. So now it'll tell me if there's lava under me. Now I'm not going to print out what, at what height any of this stuff is at. Um, a lot of people, when I've mentioned this on like the forums or the discord have said you know just tell us what rocks are underneath don't tell us the heights or anything specific and definitely don't tell us the ores um because that would negate a whole part of the game that uh, most people want to still play so this will tell you um if there's lava or rock under you now let's see if it actually prints out in the right order because when it comes back up here you know it's going to have that rock types and it's going to enumerate over them. So let's see if it's in the right order this time around. Um, yeah. So build, rebuild, and do this whole song and dance again. I really should have set up some things and stuff, but I don't usually do that. 
Because once the once once it's done, I usually don't usually don't go back to it over and over and over again. Oh come on. Send to compressed. Um uh, let's go to mods. Because you can have the mod in the mods directory. You can have this. Um, you can have it decompressed. You don't have to have zip files in here. So it would be easier just to copy it into here um, rather than, you know, somewhere else. Uh, okay, so just to be on the safe side, we're going to remove that. You don't have to really do that, I don't think. But I just don't want to run into any issues um otherwise all right yeah taking a while to load da, 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 da. My Angel Belt actually adds one of these event systems that you see when you load a single player event. I don't know if anybody's caught it or not, but. Oh, she's loading all right. Okay. So, again, let's, let's double check. Doesn't, doesn't print anything out, which is good. Boom. Chalk, bauxite, andesite. That is definitely the right order of things. So if we fly, you know, some ways away, and we look at another type of rock. Do, 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 do. Yeah, there's a lot of chalk around here. It's an ocean of chalk. Let's try in here. So remember, you have to you have to mine rock. Good lord. Let's just There we go. I'm trying to test here. Okay. Chalk, bauxite, yeah. Like I said, there's a lot of chalk and a lot of bauxite and a lot of andesite in this area. Um, but I can I can speed up my my process here. We okay. So now we have bauxite and granite. So let's see. Boom, bauxite, granite, andesite. So you can see it actually is working now. I was hoping to find some lava. Yeah, I'm going a little too fast. A little too fast. Uh, let's just dig into the mountain here a little bit. So what I could do... Yeah, I don't have a, I don't have a lantern on this test character. I can't figure out what the lantern code is. Oh, there's some tin. So we do vein wine. Oh yeah. Nah. All of the tin. Okay, let's check. Granite and oh only granite and andesite underneath us here. We Okay, let's uh, reset our reset our speed a little bit. Huh. Yeah, what I uh, what I mean like lava is rare. There's not much lava in the world. I'm used to these games having tons and tons of lava. I mean, Boundless had a 
metric ton of lava. So Minecraft did too. Hmm. Yeah, I'm pretty sure you have to go a long ways away. Let's just... Over here, just to see if anything radically changes. Ooh, there's some. Shale. Shale bauxite. <laughs> it's just the same. Uh, yeah, I'm hoping some future version. Um, has shale, bauxite, andersite. Huh, yeah. They need to they need to mix up the uh the rock types a little bit. Basalt shale box that look at that. We got four different types of rock here. Nice. Alright. Still haven't found any I really want to find a spot of lava. Um, Sonic give item torch ten. Hmm. Torch. Let's do. I think torch dash lit. No. I'd have to look up the item code for that. Fortunately. Ooh, there's some quartz. Let's, uh, vein mine, poink. And that just added it all to my inventory. Look at all that. Glorious. Those single blocks break off because the uh, the other blocks around them are broken first. Okay, how about you? I'm still trying to find lava. Like, where is lava at? Good lord. There's some terra preta. Boxite, granite, yeah. Crazy... Craziness. Looks like granite and decide. Anyway, you get the idea. It is what it is. You know, if you want to use it, you can use it. It's going to be there. Give me back to uh, standard. Standard area here that I've been using to test. Oh, there's some lava. Ha! Look at that. Rock found. Chalk, bauxite, granite, andesite, lava. Yay. I know lava isn't a rock, so technically it's not rock found, but, you know, I just, no, I just don't. <laughs> Save and leave world. So, the mod works. It is good. Um, so, instead of rock found... Do, 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 where is it at? Rock found. I could say blocks found. But I'm going to keep it rock found. If lava happens to pop up, you know, I hope there's not going to be a person that's going to be like, hey, lava isn't a block. I mean, it's, or lava isn't a rock. I mean, it's technically liquid rock, so. It is what it is. So that works. That that does exactly what I want it to do. And the mod is good to go. And yeah, I think we can call that a day. And why is this? 
Use the new keyword. Hides inherited member. Oh, there is an already inherited member of API. Use a new keyword. Okay, well, I don't care about that. Um, so yeah, this is good to go. I think, I think we can do one last build. Um, let's see, rock, lava, that all works, that works. Oh, I'm so happy this works. So build, rebuild, last iteration. Let's go release rock sniffer and ores of plenty. Newer. We already have the recipe in. So the rock sniffer recipe is good to go. Um, so this is all good. It works great. Close that. Um, recipes, that's good. Patches, is there anything I want to do? Uh, let's see. Just check some of my files before I before I zip up a new version of this. I really want to make sure. Let's change Galena down a little bit. My Galena. I want zero point five. I want Limonite one. Hematite 1.5, Magnetite 0.5. Pretty sure you can have decimals in those. Fairly certain, anyway. Um, native Gold, tries to chunk. Native Gold is usually pretty deep. Um, uh, let's see. Sphalerite. It's fine. Do I not have? Oh, I do have Bismuth Knight. Bismuth Knight. Bis Bismuth Knight. <laughs> That's a hard one to say. Um. Okay. M mineral ore. Most of these are not used. I haven't found, I've been finding very much lapis. Y relative position, thickness, attributes. Why is there no radius in here? There it is, radius. I want uniform. Average four, variable three. I want average three, variable two. Shrink that down. Y relative position. We're going to shrink that down to thickness is fine. It's only found in marble and limestone, which is probably why I haven't been finding it, because I don't think I've found any limestone in the world that we have yet. The, the, rock, the rock strata in the game is one of those things, it does not change all that often. There's not a lot of variation. Um, so, salt domes, I want, yeah, tries per chunk. 0.25. I'm going to set that to 0.15. I've been finding a lot of salt around. Olivine, I actually set this now to appear in more types of rock, so you can find it better places, um, as well as diamonds, because there's there's a lot of diamonds being used in some of my mods. 
So I add diamonds to basalt. So you can find them um, in basalt now, in, in, well, newly generated basalt. Um, and coal, I would like lignite to be 0 0.5. I want to shrink this down to 6. Relative position, that should be fine. Uh, actually, let's set radius down to 5. Variability down to 2. Thickness, we're going to set as 2. I've been finding enormous veins of brown coal, which is what lignite is. And we don't use brown coal for anything. It's like the crappiest version of coal. Bituminous coal, this is what we've been using a lot. This is the black coal. Um, tries per chunk, 3. We're going to set that down to 2. Um, radius, Gaussian. Uh, let's see. Gaussian is sort of a bump in the middle. So it goes whoop. And it... it so I, I'm going to set this to uniform. No, not the whole line. Um, thickness. Strong inverse exponential. Expo inverse exponential is the one that starts high and goes zoo, And so it favors your average, not your variable. Or not your, you know, max number. Um, so let's do three here, and we're going to do Gaussian instead. So it'll be kind of bumpy in the middle, so it'll, it's more sphere-like when you have Gaussian thickness. Uh, all right. That takes care of coal. Metal, I've already lowered... Iron down. I lowered Galena. Um, my gold. Rhodochrosite's not used. Pentlantite's not used. Malachite is just another version of copper. Ilmenite. Ilmenite. This is titanium. And these, I'm pretty happy with these settings. I find I find it when I need it, which is, you know, I might have to dig around a little bit, but I don't mind digging around a little bit. So I have to dig around a lot and search for hours that I have that I have problems. Uh, all right, so these this lava bucket that enables you know the lava bucket actually scooping up lava with a bucket. Um, and now that I know a little bit more about the game, I might be able to add a metal bucket just for lava. Um, everything else, fertilizer just adds um, higher values of fertilizer. But there's something seriously broken with the game right now when it comes to fertilizer. All right, we're going to copy or sniffer, or we're going to copy ores of plenty. And set up that. And mods. And I'm going to copy this over to my patrons. Okay, and uh, I need to load up the server. Hey Boogie, if I may recommend, you might want to uh, cut the stream and then restart it to keep uh, the gaming and the, the programming separate. Well, yeah, I could do that. Okay. Just if people see, uh, you know nine hour programming stream they might not be as interested <laughs> <laughs> what are you saying i'm not as in, i'm not that interesting <clears throat> <laughs> <I said nothing. laughs>
No comment, sir. <laughs> All right, copying that onto the server. Delete the old one. Delete the old version in the cache. And we're going to do CLS. Start the server back up. All right. So, yeah. Um, what I need to do now is update the vintage story mod uh, login is it gonna log hey look at that it logged me in yay uh, okay so this is the orza plenty mod here um, 729 downloads not bad of course uh, a lot of that is repeat downloads because I I was going through some I was going through update update anxiety here. I was updating it all the time. Um, so we're going to add a release to this and we are going to drag that old file or is a plenty 2.1 to here. This is definitely compatible with 15.9. That's what I was testing it with. Um, okay, so this um, Slightly tweaks uh, Galena Gen. Slightly nerfs. I should just say nerfs because that's more descriptive. Slightly nerfs Galena generation. <clears throat> um, adds Rock Sniffer, a tool to replace. A tool that reports the rock directly under the broken broken under the under the rock you break. A tool that reports the rock directly under the rock you break does not tell you height. Ores or any caves. You'll have to find that those out yourself. Adds a rock sniffer. The tool that reports the rock drunk under the rock you break does not tell you height, ores, or any caves. You'll have to find those out yourself. Um, re adjust fertile fertilizer values. He just fertilizer values slightly. I wanted to put, you know. I tried to keep a note in my brain of all the little of all the little things that I did to the mod between updates. Oh yeah, there's one big one. Added diamond ore generation to basalt. I was oh. I Oh come on. I clicked this. I was tired of trying to find. <clears throat> okay, so save. Um, and back. Do do do. So. Uh, v2.1 adds new tool, rock sniffer, adds diamond ore to basalt, other minor changes. Okay, 
Adds in tool the rock sniffer. Adds down her bombs. Rock sniffer is similar to the pick. Only it tells you the rock directly under the block you break. Uh, rock sniffer is similar to the prospecting pick, only it tells you the rock types. Uh, does not tell you height, ores, or cave systems at all. And I want to emphasize does not. People are people are very much against cheating, which I understand. I don't agree with, but I don't. I understand. Does not tell you height, ores, or cave systems at all. Add comment. Rock sniffer is similar to the prospecting pick, only it tells you the rock types are going on and add comment. I know we already have like a change log thing here, but most people I think do not click on the change log thing. I think. So I put a comment down here just to sort of because when somebody goes to like the home page of the mod, they're going to immediately come down here. The the change log, um, one of the things I would do is I would take the change log from the most recent file and I would tack it onto the bottom of this. So now I need to edit this thing. Um... Adds rock sniffer, a tool to probe the rock directly under the block you break. Adds diamond or gem to the salt. Uh, do do no 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 yeah I spelled up on the crucible. Yeah, this came up. One of the people on the Discord was very angry that iron, they put a bunch of iron in bloomeries and it came out with iron ingots. And he was like, why? I'm like, well, that's because I changed it. So we just deleted that out of the file, which I'm fine with. If you want to mod the mod and take out the features that you don't like, then that's fine. Just don't box it up and try to send it out as its own mod. Uh, do, do, do. So, extra worth it. Okay, so um, B two dot one uh, added rock sniffer a new tool for your prospecting prospecting endeavors oh I didn't want to <laughs> I always hit I always do that control s on on forms like this uh, okay um, client and server side it's needed and published I think we're good Save. So, the mod is now available. So the other thing I want to do is I want to add my random things mod. So I'm going to submit a mod. Uh, tags. This is going to be... Oh, there's so many things. So many things in here. Uh, quality of life... Tweak, cheats, um, is there crafting, weapons, world gen, technology, graphics, furniture, food, craft, no, not creatures, I don't do any creatures in here, crafting though I do, um, 
and some food. There's just all of the tags in this. This is going to be uh, Buggy's Rant. Oh, Buggy's Random Changes. Random Changes. Okay. Um, so, I'm going to submit this mod. I've got a lot of typing to do, and I'd rather not do that on stream. So what I want to do is end it now, and um, and we'll come back and maybe do some work. I don't know if I do. I don't know. I am. Uh, I don't know if I want to unveil the build in its half finished form. Um, I'm 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 on the fence about that. If if Oz wants to chime in with what he thinks. Uh, I can, I can see you going either way. If you wanted, I could pop in and put a dirt wall in front of it. <laughs> no, because that's all that I'm working on right now. So if I were to stream the game, that's what I would be streaming is is working on that, um, a lot. Uh, so yeah. Uh, so this may be just a quick two hour stream today, but. You know, it is what it is. Sometimes sometimes it'd be like that. So, um, yeah, I think uh, I think that'll do it. I hope anybody learned something. I didn't see any comments. Um, I didn't see any questions. Um, but if you're watching this after the fact, you know, don't hesitate to either hit me up on Discord. I am on my server. I am on the Vintage Story server. And I am on the Vintage Story uh, modding server. Vintage Story Works, I think it's called. Yeah, VS Works. Um, so I'm buggy on all of those. If you have modding questions, hit me up on there. Um, on the forums, you know, I'm, I've been posting my mods on there too. So, yeah, there's lots of places to get a hold of me, lots of places um, to send feedback or questions. And I want to thank everybody for coming by, and I will see you next time.